Welcome back to part three of the golf cart build. So today we're finishing up the uh, battery trays and hopefully going to have the batteries all installed and start laying out the electronics. We'll do a little unboxing of all the electronics I got from Carts Unlimited. So ran out here the new batteries right here. Uh, Powertron P8000s. There's five in here and then there's one in there for test fitting. We have the front pieces welded in now, so they're not going anywhere. Uh, we measured eight and a half across, and then we'll weld our angle iron on each side to hold the batteries in. So right now we're building a support for the back side to hold the back end of this battery tray up. Once that's built and welded in, we'll weld this guy into the front, and then we can start cutting out our angle iron for the other pieces. Got four of the batteries in to kind of test fit where everything's going. Uh, the battery cage is tacked in place. And we got our piece that James cut up down there. So we'll pull the batteries out, weld that support piece in the back, and then weld this battery tray in completely. And then we can test fit the rest of the batteries. Battery tray is welded in, the center battery tray our support in the back so we're fitting the uh, angle iron pieces on the side that hold the two batteries on the side James is cutting the other one right now we'll get those welded in fit the batteries and the, the whole tray assembly should be complete after that and then just uh, start fitting up the electronics and once everything's all set and good to go then we can we can paint everything Oh, James is doing that side. He just went in and did a bunch of tack welds across here to hold this, this guy in. Same on this side. This side's not as pretty, but they'll serve its purpose to hold the batteries. And James is tacking the other side in now. Here's the current mock-up of the golf cart build. I've got the batteries just sitting in here. 
uh, went ahead and drilled some new holes and mounted our new uh, resistor or our solenoid rather uh, got the SW202 reverse contactor just sitting here I think I'm going to mount it down on that uh, that bar down there and then kind of have the all tracks just sitting in here mocked up to kind of see where everything's going to go so I'll drill holes and center this on this uh, panel here uh, get that screwed down and then we can start running cabling which is a mess right now but yeah so this is the the current mock-up for this what's up so last where I left off fit up everything the batteries the uh, ECU uh, the module solenoids all that and I have now stripped it all back down and painted all our welding work so I used a uh, rust reformer since there's still a lot of rust and a lot of pitting on this so we'll see how this works I'm also going to put a undercoating like a vehicle undercoating on it once this dries so once all this dries I'll get all the modules back in and show how we have the wiring routed because we found out when we were doing the wiring there's some different items other than what the instructions say which you need to look out for mainly these two wires can be reversed on Yamaha's but I'll get into that so I'll run through the wiring how we're going to route the cables and all that but I do want to take time out and thank uh, Carts Unlimited for the, uh, the all tracks we got along with our, our solenoid and our uh, our reverse connector gear here so not a sponsor but this guy helped out a lot and he was very responsive with emails when I had questions and everything on how to how to wire this up so as you see we got a new solenoid all new cabling the all tracks is going to be our new ECU which you can program it with a computer which is pretty awesome as I stated in the very first video, we converted to a 48 volt cell that's necessary. Now we got our 8 volt batteries and all that. So we'll try this setup. And the last thing, if this setup still doesn't give it enough power, I can always change out the motor. But we'll see what how this does with the, the setup we got. Alright, picking, picking up where I left off earlier. Uh, coated the uh, battery trays with undercoating. So the camera screen's probably dirty because I did not move it out of the way. Uh, went ahead and mounted our our reversing controller and our all tracks as well as the solenoid. It's all mounted up in its permanent spot and all the batteries are in place. I'll have to get some battery tie downs and we'll start running cabling. But I wanted to go over the wiring real quick. So the all tracks you have your original controller wiring here which is your uh, your blue white and green what I want to point out in the instructions your blue is actually supposed to go to B negative which is on the bottom side here and then the green to your uh, J4 but in the instructions it also says in the notes that not all Yamaha carts are wired the same so those two could be reversed so when me and James had this together yesterday, we had uh, the green and blue reverse, which actually reverses your throttle. So the throttle was full load with the throttle off. And then as you pushed it down, it went slower. So the th basically the throttle was, re the polarity was reversed. So it says in the instruction to swap swap the blue and green if that happens which is what we had to do and then we also had to make sure you hook it up to the laptop and make sure you calibrate the uh, throttle because the other issue we were having was the throttle was either on or off there was no partial throttle to it and we found out that was because of the calibration so it explains those three wires then you have your red on here that goes to your positive on your solenoid 
your brown going to the positive on the solenoid, which is also your, your brown on your key. So that's on your key switch. And then your red yellow from the key switch, which we have here, is going to go directly to your positive wire here. So that's basically your key turning the uh, power to the whole system on or off. And then uh, your black on your all tracks is going to your uh, solenoid negative. Uh, blue is for, so green in the instructions is not used. And then the blue is for you, I think you hook it into the reversing wire and it basically, it slows your reverse speed down. So you're not going as fast in reverse. But that's also an optional thing too, so we didn't end up hooking that up. We're not worried about it. And then on your switching gear, you have you have a ground on the bottom on each side. Spliced into your ground, that's going to your B negative as well with your green wire. And then your positive is up top on each side. And that's going through this loom to your switch here. So your two positives to your switch will go on each side of the switch. So one will go one will go here, the other will go on this side. And then your center for this switch is actually your red and white, which comes off your your throttle control here. So you have a brown and red and white wire coming off of here. So your brown splices into the key switch and goes to the positive on the solenoid. And your red and white is your other uh, wire coming off that micro switch and that's what goes to your uh, forward reverse switch so that's what gives this forward reverse switch uh, its power um, I haven't figured out the charger yet I'll uh, once I get into the wiring going into the charger so you can see we got some old diodes or fuses that were on this cart they're pretty janky so I have to get those replaced but I'll I'll film how I wire the charger once I figure that out. And then also, uh, so that's all the small wires. So also the cabling, I'll go ahead. Once I get all the cabling hooked up, I'll run through the cabling. And I'll try and post some links in uh, the description with the, uh, the all tracks diagram for this. It's a little confusing because there's four, three or four different diagrams. Since we're not just replacing the controller, we're replacing both your forward reverse controller and the uh, solenoid so there's a lot of additional wires and wires that aren't used but if you have any questions you can put in the comments below if you have any suggestions if i'm doing something wrong it's always a possibility we've just been kind of plug and play and hook it up and see what happens type of thing and the way we have it hooked up now it works but that's not to say I'm missing a solenoid or missing a diode somewhere that could cause damage to something. But so far, hooking the all tracks up to the PC and everything, I don't have any error codes or anything like that. So we should be good to go the way it's hooked up. So I'll go ahead and uh, start putting cabling together and I can walk through that after.